Hi, welcome to another episode of Bjorfest, where I'm lucky enough to be able to bring you uh, interviews and knowledge of very interesting brewers and people around the world. So um, today I have John Hilliard. John is the owner of Kamado Beer in Japan. and um, But John, you're not actually from Japan originally, are you? I'm originally from Manchester, England, but uh, lived in the US for 33 years. I was a uh, working in the uh, refinery industry um, most of my life and uh, started home brewing for about uh, 15 years in uh, Los Angeles. I joined a great uh, homebrew club called uh, uh, Pacific Gravity where they actually uh, help you uh, brew the, the uh, perfect pint and uh, quite a few of the members went on to open up uh, their own breweries. After I um, uh, retired, my wife, Atsuko, and I decided to move to uh, Japan, where uh, uh, she's from, and uh, open up a brewery in uh, Tokyo. That sounds a pretty big step, because from what I understand, the, it, it's quite a heavily regulated business in Japan. And, you know, there's tight, tight controls on it. So uh, opening up a, a brewery is pretty uh, complicated with lots of uh, tax uh, regulations here with which my uh, wife had to uh, work on. Even uh, home brewing here is uh, uh, difficult. You know, you can home brew, but it has to be below uh, 1% alcohol. It uh, took about a year to find a good location with a high ceiling for the uh, fermenters and the uh, brew house we got from uh, China. It, it, the uh, quality is good. It took about six months to build, then shipped to uh, Tokyo. Then about six months to install the uh, brewery. It's a 300 liter brewery with uh, four uh, uni tanks. And uh, we've been open for nearly three years now. And uh, we're on the east side of uh, Tokyo in the town of uh, Kimedo, which is the old uh, historical side of uh, Tokyo. Our uh, brewery name is uh, Kimedo Beer and uh, Kami in Japanese means uh, turtle. So our logo is a uh, turtle drinking beer. Yeah, uh, lots of the uh, businesses in this town have the uh, turtle as their logo. And what's the beer scene like generally? Is there much interest in it, or is it, um, is it you know, spirits or macro lagers, or what are people drinking? The uh, craft beer scene here is uh, still quite young, but uh, just in the past year, there's been a lot of new uh, breweries that's been uh, uh, popping up. So I'd say it, the uh, craft beer is uh, getting uh, popular now. Uh, and uh, they seem to love the IPAs and uh, hazies. That seems to be a, uh, a favorite. But of course, uh, you can't beat the uh, main drink here is uh, lagers, you know, made by the uh, big uh, uh, companies. And is that what you brew yourself? Is it there? Or is it what you drink yourself? And I guess the, the question really is like, how do you balance what that lager demand against maybe beers that you would like to drink yourself or that you think maybe a smaller group of a smaller customer base would, would do? You know, how, how do you balance the beers you drink or you, that you brew? Sorry. Yeah, so s since I was living in uh, Los Angeles, I, I uh, got into the uh, West Coast style beers. So, uh, like to make the IPAs and the hazies and uh, pale ales with a lot of uh, whirlpooling and uh, dry hopping. Yeah, I'm always trying to look to get the uh, freshest hops uh, possible. Also, uh, we make a, a strong uh, Belgian and uh, I make some blondes as well. Yeah, the uh, craft beer drinkers here, they uh, like the uh, IPA and uh, hazies. But the uh, most popular amongst the uh, first-time locals is the uh, Blonde, since the, it's uh, quite close to what they're used to drinking, like the uh, uh, lagers. And if they uh, come back, then I, I was trying to push the uh, 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 Pale Ale, which is a very uh, smooth uh, uh, drink. And uh, after that, then they sometimes uh, s switch over to the... Uh, uh, West Coast uh, IPA. 
and then as the uh, season gets uh, colder, I'll uh, start making uh, more uh, stout. So I know that along with the brewery itself, you have a tap room. Is that your main distribution, or do you like do you can and bottle and, and ship to other places to retail, or what's it like to to distribute beer? I guess in Japan, we're a, a small uh, three hundred liter uh, brewery. Just uh, me and the wife, so we're not uh, planning to grow the uh, business uh, too big yet. It's a, a lot of work for uh, two people. We uh, sell most of our beers here in our uh, tap room. We have uh, uh, 17 seats and uh, six taps. And uh, there is a, a popular uh, shrine which is uh, next to us. It's called the uh, Attention uh, Shrine. It's about uh, 370 years old. So uh, lots of uh, history there, and uh, that brings in uh, quite a few uh, tourists and uh, first uh, timers. And uh, we also have a lot of uh, locals. Uh, plus, we have a, a few bars around uh, the country that we sell our uh, kegs to and uh, bottles. And how does that work? Because it sounds like. It sounds like an awful lot of effort for, you know, like, like you're saying, it, it's a lot of work already. It sounds like an awful lot more work just for, you know, a few kegs to to get to bars and stuff around the country. Is it is, the, is it an easy process? Yeah, well, we just uh, uh, drop off the uh, kegs at the local uh, post office here, which has a, a coal room, and it gets uh, d delivered uh, coal the uh, next day from anywhere in uh, Japan. Actually, yeah, Gareth from BZ, um further north of you, he, he mentioned that the post office just has cold delivery. I'm still pretty pretty amazed at that. Yeah, I think the uh, uh, service is uh, great. So, I mean, it sounds like a vibrant scene and, you're, you know, you have some real advantages there with things like post offices shipping your, shipping your cold beer. But what, what challenges did you come up against or what challenges do you think as a whole, you know, arise from trying to brew craft beer in Japan. A, uh, another challenge we had was they made the brew house 10 centimeters uh, too long. It uh, needed a fit between two concrete walls. So uh, luckily I, I was able to break out my welding skills and uh, cut and shorten the uh, uh, platform. Then the uh, manufacturer sent us shorter piping so it would all fit. So I think my uh, refinery experience uh, helped out a lot with the insulation. So uh, in hindsight, when you give the uh, uh, manufacturing the uh, sizes that it needs to fit into, you need to double and uh, triple check the uh, sizes uh, with them. And also, if you buy uh, uh, equipment from overseas, uh, chillers, boilers, you uh, must make sure first that they can be maintained uh, locally. I've got a, a great uh, chiller that I got from uh, a, a Belgian at a good price, but I can't get any local company here to uh, maintain it. So uh, you need to buy uh, local uh, gear and it's expensive, but uh, they will c come out pretty quick and uh, repair them. So what do you think the future holds for you and for Kamado beer? Yeah, uh, right now we're uh, bottling, but uh, future plans, we'd uh, like to start uh, canning our beers and uh, slowly grow the business, uh, uh, hire staff. But at the moment, uh, space is very uh, limited. So adding more uh, machinery might be uh, uh, difficult. And uh, we want to be uh, attending more uh, festivals and uh, markets so we can put our, our uh, name out there. Yeah, the uh, craft beer scene in uh, Japan now is uh, exploding. Uh, many new uh, breweries are uh, s uh, starting to open up. So I just hope that'll bring more attention to uh, uh, craft beer. Okay, John, listen... Um... Thanks a million for your time. It's been a great, great insight into the Japanese scene, which I know very little about. Um, 
you know, <laughs> Japan being such a unique culture anyway. So thanks for taking the time to uh, to talk to me. Um, yeah, where can people find you? Uh, thank you, Brian, to uh, invite me to chat. Uh, you can uh, check us out at comedobia.com and we're also on uh, Twitter. Thank you.